Today we are going to learn how to paint the attack on Titan Mega Gargan's muscles. Then the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connected to the great mind, the great spirit. Welcome back to the channel collectors. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I painted the muscles on my Attack on Titan style Mega Gargan. So the Attack on Titan style Mega Gargan is something that we have recently finished. Uh, there are two videos recorded in this uh, series of tutorials. So you should check out the next one where I cover the individual materials and I use extensively the overbrush method to achieve the results on this Mega Gargan. Alright, so if you're ready, let us begin. Alright, this is something that you are really waiting for. Welcome back. These are the colors that you will be needing to paint the muscles on the Games Workshop Mega Gargan. Alright, so let's get started. So as a refresher, in the assembly video, what we have done is we have sanded down many of the details on the Mega Gargan. As you can tell that the Mega Gargan has wrinkles which don't align well with the direction of the muscle fibers. This is why we are sending off the details so that we can best freehand the muscle fibers on the Mega Gargan. Alright? Right here I'm using a sanding sponge. This is a sanding sponge has a grid of 1000. I find this particularly good because if you have a sanding sponge with a much higher grid, you might leave some marks or if you are using a foul, uh, that's not good too. You want to have this surface as smooth as possible to allow the free hand of the muscle fibers as freely as possible. Okay, so if you are ready, we are going to be starting in just a little bit and I'll catch you in a little time jump. Okay, so here we are. We have primed the entire miniature using Krylon Camo Brown. Uh, however, any dark black brown color is fine. Currently, I'm overbrushing Blue Model Color Black Red onto the entire miniature. If you look closely enough, I'm actually doing a very intense stippling. I want to create some degree of textures on the muscle fibers so as to not only base coat but also to create some degree of visual interest for the muscles at this point of time do take note you don't really need to be too neat some of the paint can be overlapping the cloth and we're going to clean that up in the later stages of the painting video a uh, point to take note is that you want to be careful near the fragile edges of these drapes because these drapes are very highly detailed and if you overbrush and stipple too hard <laughs> you might end up with some broken parts so do work around these areas with uh, more caution okay so this is the final result Okay, so now I'm using a white watercolor pencil to plot in the tendons. Uh, one important point that I wish everyone would take note that these aren't bones, these are actually tendons. So there's a difference between tendons and bones. Then I'm also plotting in the main muscle structures right here. So I'm placing in the abdominals, abdominal muscle. At this point of time, what I want to draw your attention to is the position of the abdominal muscles. Right here, they are slightly leaning to the right hand side of the giant. 
based on his anatomy. And do take note that uh, in human anatomy, we have eight ab muscles, six for the top, and kind of two really low down below the belly button. So that's how I'm placing it. Okay. So I'm placing the lats here. These are the muscles uh, that come on the side of the abdominal muscles. And I'm placing the muscles for the quadriceps right here. Fun fact, why it's called a quadricep is because there are four muscles in this muscle group. That's why it's called a quadricep. Okay, I'm also plotting out how to uh, illustrate the kneecap so as to make this as realistic as possible. You might find it interesting to know that there is this white band that is near the groin of the mega gargan. That muscle is the longest muscle in the human anatomy. So it's called the iliotibial band or ITB for short. I like to plot in the ITB because uh, I find that it adds some degree of realism and visual interest. Okay, so right now I'm using Vallejo model color German camo beige to plot in the tendons. Uh, why I use uh, watercolor pencil and white at the start is because watercolor pencil is uh, water soluble and because it's water soluble after having this edges painted you can always clean off the excess that we didn't use at this point of time I want to bring your attention across to ensure that to ensure that your lines are as clean and as neat as possible You want to make sure that these lines are as sharp and clean because this adds to the realism of the anatomy for this mega garden. So I've taken some liberty to add in some tendons that don't really exist. So I'm placing in some tendons under the deltoids for visual interest. And right now I'm going to be using a mix of German camo beige mixed in with black red, Vallejo model color. Block in the main muscles. At this point of time, what I want everybody to be focused on is that I'm just breaking the muscles down into larger chunks while I'm painting parallel to the muscle fibers to create some degree of texture this stage is designed in order to just break the muscles to larger chunks if you want to know where to break the muscles down to larger chunks you can always check uh, anatomy photos or illustrations of uh, muscles men and you can know where like the muscle split so for example the chest muscle split into two muscles and like the abdominal muscles the fibers run vertically to the body right now i'm using a size 2 da vinci and you can see that uh, I'm not really going into much detail. I'm just re-emphasizing and focusing on the direction of the muscle fibers. So as I said, the chest muscle is divided by two muscles. I place more highlights upon the lower muscles and the top muscles, deliberately leaving a gap in the middle. And now I'm working on the deltoid for this mega gargan. OK, 
Okay, I'm just filling in some of the extras right here. And right now, I'm mixing in a little bit of Chimera Red mixed in with our Scale 75 Basic Flash. This is to create the mid-tone. My mid-tone will be based upon Scale 75 Basic Flash as a middle value. Right now I'm using a DaVinci size 0 brush to create the muscle striations. At this point of time, you don't need to have the muscles too well defined. You just need to have them in many lines and running in the right direction. Also don't worry if you accidentally cover up some of the tendons because we can always fix them very easily with Vallejo Model Color German Camo Beach. But the whole model color German Camo Beige tends to be a very opaque color and it's very easy to work with. So that's why one of the reasons why I've chosen that to be the tendon color. Okay, right here, if you can see, I'm pulling the muscles towards, pulling the brush directions towards the highlight. And I'm re-emphasizing the form of the muscle. So as to illustrate and highlight individual muscle groups and their texture. So now working on the abdominal muscles. So what you can see is that I'm being extremely careful creating these muscle fibers in vertical lines. At this point of time, we are still working on the mid-tone, so there is no urgent need to emphasize and to show the shapes of the muscles yet. We will be doing that in the highlight stage subsequently. So some of my brush strokes might look just a little bit too rough, might look a little bit too aggressive but it's okay because in the later stages we are also going to be cleaning up and little mistakes like that can be easily fixed in subsequent stages. As you can observe, I am gradually adding in more and more scale 75 basic flash into the mix. So right now I begin to create the highlight. And how do I do that? I'm currently using the previous mix and I'm throwing in a little bit of scale 75 pale flash. Scale 75 pale flash it's a flesh color of a higher value. So this works really well for creating a good transition into a highlight value for these muscle groups. At this point of time, I'm gradually creating the relief for the muscles. The opacity of paints that are used in this entire paint process uh, tends to be pre-opaque. I hardly thin the paint down at all. but 
for newer painters, I do recommend that you thin your paints down slightly more because you don't want to end up with too much texture on your miniature. Duncan Watson said, to thin coat. So this process is really just gradually adding in more and more scale 75 pale flesh to increase the values ever so slightly every layer. Now adding in even more scale 75 pale flesh and thin it down slightly, I'm going to be creating some extreme highlights and to showcase some muscle fibers. So, one tip I can give to everybody while painting this is that you want to emphasize the form and shape of the main muscles. So, this is why I brought up previously that the chest is broken down into two muscles. The lower muscle has been given a H highlight on top to provide greater degree of interest. And to also illustrate the form of the miniature. Now right here what you can see is that I'm also creating some forms of vertical highlights. So right here, I'm using almost pure scale 75 pale flesh to create some extreme highlights. So for the extreme highlights, I recommend doing some very thin strivations. And on top of that, you want to do a little bit of fine stippling if you look at a lot of medical illustrations, muscle fibers are reflective, but they also have this little, um, like, I don't know how to call it, but to me it's like a little bit of glimmer. And in my humble opinion, how to create glimmer is to create some stipples. This also gives and adds texture to the muscle fibers for increased realism. like areas that are more raised like the deltoid can I have larger highlights and areas which are more protruding from the miniature such as this leading leg's knee can I have larger highlights too So right now I'm using down a thin down version of Volupus Pink. This contrast paint does not have much opacity but I find that it creates a very nice filter to the muscle fibers. So it allows the muscle fibers to retain its value while increasing the pink saturation on the muscles. So you might be asking, what am I placing Volupus Pink for? I'm using Volupus Pink, sort of like a quasi shape, so that I can start to sculpt and influence the, the values and shapes on 
each individual muscle. Alright, so with that stitch done, we're going to be going back to Olejo Model Color German Camel Beach to redefine and to clean up the tendons which we have freehanded just now. So like for this sternum, I'm creating some texture by highlighting the sculpted textures on this miniature. The objective here is to clean it up as best as possible so that nothing is showing. So mixing German Camel Beige with a little bit of Joe Sonia Raw Umber, we are going to be creating sort of like a Transition shadow color, I would say, for all the tendons. So I find that when we are cleaning up the tendon, these starting to look pretty realistic and I'm pretty happy with the result. Okay, shading down the inside of the leg, areas under the bulging muscles. And now adding in a little bit of Vallejo model colors, stone grey. I'm gonna be creating the first highlight for the tendon. This point of time, I want to draw your attention to this group of muscles right in front of the giant because the giant has a belly that sticks out a lot. These batch of muscles and tendons tend to get a lot of attention. Hence, we need to create more edge highlighting for these tendons as well as the kneecap, which protrudes out of the model. Okay, now creating some highlights for the ITB, Helio Tibia Band, for those who have missed the name previously. Alright, so this is the final result and we've washed it down slightly with a bit of blue. Hope you enjoyed yourself and found this useful. So now that we've finished the muscles on the Mega Gargan, we will need to move on to the little details on the Mega Gargan to finish this really amazing project. So I hope you go check out that video soon. Alright, I'd like to take this time to thank my Patreons for allowing me to do this. It's because of the help of my generous Patreons, I'm able to spend the time and effort to record and paint these videos so that we all get to become better miniature painters together. For as low as a dollar, you can get to see my finished works before anyone else in this world. So the Patreon exclusive video for this period would be the bloody NMM copper on my night rampager which you can see right here. So this project has been recently completed and I hope you go check that out. However, if you can't become a Patreon, that's okay too. I'd like to thank you for your time and for watching all the way to the end. So if you want to help out the channel, please like and subscribe because that tells YouTube that this content is good and more people get to see this content. Alright, so I hope to see you in the next video. See you! Oh,